So as you may or may not know, I run i3, which is typically a tiling window manager, but there are actually other kinds of window managers as well. So we're gonna talk about those today. So if you're new around here, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because I'm trying to hit 100 subs by the end of the year and I'm getting closer and closer every single day. So now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So the reason that I described i3 as kind of a tiling window manager is because it actually does have other layout modes, I just never use them. So if we bring up my desktop now, so I usually run it in tiling window mode but it actually does support things like stacking, floating, tabbed and I guess, I think that's pretty much it. There's The other two are basically just alternate versions of tiling. So in tiling mode, basically what happens is your windows will all take up an equal portion of the screen. So I've got two windows open right now, so they both take up half the screen. So if we open up a third one, that will then tile into the next open space and will take up another third of the screen. So typically with tiling window managers, you can also rearrange them. So say if we want this third one here to be along the bottom, then we can do that and then the first two will take up the first half of the screen. This bottom one will take up that half of the screen. So you typically work on those two axes. You have the horizontal axis and that gets split equally and you have the vertical axis and that gets split equally. So as I mentioned, there are other modes. So another mode is, that is available is stacking mode. So what do I have that bound to? Mod shift G. So basically what stacking mode does is every single one of your windows will take up the entire screen. And as you can see, because I've got some transparency there, you can actually see the window behind it. So if we open up a third window, that will then, actually we can do my browser this time, and then you'll see that that browser then takes up the entire screen. So we can also switch between which window is the main focus by just uh, using my normal switching, and then the window above that then takes the full screen precedence and you can switch the one behind that as well. So stacking mode is nice if you want all of your applications to always be full screen, but if you have, as I guess, status bars they would be called, then after you have too many of them, you're going to start running into issues where you have so many bars that you actually really don't get much effective use of the screen for your newer windows, but most of the time you're not going to be running that many windows. But if you are someone who does tend to run like 20 or 30 applications, then there is another sort of window manager for you. And that is tabbing. So if we go that, this is much like how your browser uh, does tabbing. So you can just open up as many windows as you want. I'm not going to open up a ton because if I do, my recording will freeze and I will have to redo it and that will be really annoying. But as we can see, all of our windows here still take up the full screen, but you don't have that problem with the status bars. This is another, like this is very similar to stacking. So if you don't have status bars, they're effectively the same thing. At that point, it's kind of just an aesthetic change, whether you want to scroll up and down or whether you want to scroll left and right. I would say that these are basically the same sort of window manager. So if you're going to run a stacking window manager, you can switch to a tiling, uh, you can switch to a tabbing window manager, no worries at all. And the other kind of window manager that most people are probably really familiar with is the floating window manager. So i3's floating mode isn't a perfect floating mode. It sort of just lets you do some floating windows here and there. So. I now have this floating window here. So I can just drag this around and yeah, pretty much just drag it around. So on a proper tile, oh, sorry, I keep saying tiling. On a proper floating window manager or a desktop environment that has a floating window manager built into it, you would typically be able to do things like window snapping. So on like windows or something like that, you'd be able to like drag something up here and it would snap to take up half the screen like you would see with a tiling window manager. And you can also typically do things like resizing, but in i3 you have to resize with keyboard bindings and I don't have those set up. Or maybe I do, actually. Wait, yes I do. Yeah, okay, so as you can see, I can still resize that, but it's just not as nice. So I never actually use floating mode because I don't really want to worry about ever rearranging my windows. I just want my windows to take up 
like a reasonable amount of space and if I need to resize them then I can do that afterwards. So if we drop that out of tile or out of our floating mode now, what is that mod shift space? Cool. So now we're back into tabbing mode and I'll switch back to mod mod shift Okay, now we're back in tiling mode. So obviously if I was using a proper like say stacking or proper tabbing or proper floating window manager I would be able to demonstrate them better because i3 is Basically built as a tiling window manager its support for those other layouts aren't as great But I think for the purposes of demonstration then they're probably good enough So I guess we'll go over what they were and what sort of situations they are I guess best at so if you're coming straight from Windows, then I would say a floating window manager is the most familiar, especially if you get one that supports snapping, because you can still drag the windows around like you normally would, and there's pretty much a very small learning curve there. If you want to always be using full screen applications, then either using a tabbing window manager or a stacking window manager are pretty much the same thing, with the exception of the direction that you sort, either horizontally sorting or vertically sorting. Vertically, yeah. Horizontally sorting or vertically sorting, let's not get those confused. But the reason, I did say I was going to explain why I use a tiling window manager. So the reason that I use one, there's actually a couple of reasons for this. So a tiling window manager is nice if you don't really care about the sizing of your windows. You just always want there to be equal sizing. Obviously you can resize them, but you don't want to have to, I guess, take the time to worry about them you're much more worried about just having those windows there. So take for example, when I'm doing say some development, I'll have one screen that has all of my terminals open in it. So I'll have a terminal open for my Git, I'll have a terminal open running my NPM server. And if I've got a backend for the application, like in PHP or something, I'll have my PHP server running in that terminal. And in that case, I don't care how big the windows are. I just want them there. And the nice thing about tiling windows, as opposed to a floating window in that case, so I, I don't have to move the windows into place so I can actually see the output on them. With a tiling window manager, they just instantly take up the portion of the screen that is defined for those tiles. So I can just open them up and not have to worry about them. And then for my dev side, say I have my code editor on one side, and then I have the documentation or I have Stack Overflow open in the other side. If I need the code editor part to be bigger, then I can resize that to be bigger. But typically, I just want to have half the screen to be my code editor and half the screen to be my documentation or whatever else I'm looking at. So the nice thing about using a tiling window manager is that it takes away a lot of that, I guess, bit of effort that you were going to do any over the floating window manager. Because even when I was using one, back when I was on Windows, I would still just take up half the screen with my code editor and half the screen with my web browser. So I'm actually doing the exact same thing that I was doing with a floating window manager with a tiling window manager, but I just removed the step of having to readjust the windows. Also, as with a lot of other stuff that I talk about on my channel, I just think that tiling window managers are cool. I don't really have much else to say. They make let me make tiles, I think the tiles look cool, and yeah, that's nice. And I personally don't like it, but there is a fork of i3 called i3 gaps that'll put, like I guess, a couple pixel gap between each window. Personally, I don't like it, but I've seen a lot of systems that when set up correctly look really cool with them. And if that's your thing, then you can do that with a tiling window manager. Obviously, you can do the exact same thing with a floating window manager, but to do that, you would have to then just like resize them all the time and it's just a complete hassle. And basically, I guess the overall theme with why I like tiling window managers is because they're just simple. They take away the need of having to sort out windows. Yeah, you can, but most of the time you're just gonna create some windows and just leave them as they are. So as I mentioned earlier, if I was actually going to do a proper comparison between these different sorts of window managers, I would install those window managers to actually use those modes natively. But I just felt like doing something quick and I just wanted to talk about what these different modes were and pretty much the use cases for them, I guess. 
So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. So if you're new around here, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below and you'll probably get updates. But as always, YouTube can never be trusted to push updates to anyone. So also go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there. So if you've got any other ideas for things you want me to cover, then let me know and I'll be happy to address them. I'm always looking for new ideas. I've got tons and tons of stuff on my list, but I'm always happy to add some more to it. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.